Chapter Fifteen: The Prisoners of the Queen. Approaching the gateway of the Emerald City, the travellers found it guarded by two girls of the Army of Revolt, who opposed their entrance by drawing the knitting needles from their hair and threatening to prod the first that came near. But the Tin Woodman was not afraid. At the worst, they can but scratch my beautiful nickel plate, he said. But there will be no worst, for I think I can manage to frighten these absurd soldiers very easily. Follow me closely, all of you. Then, swinging his axe in a great circle to right and left before him, he advanced upon the gate, and the others followed him without hesitation. The girls, who had expected no resistance whatever, were terrified by the sweep of the glittering axe, and fled, screaming into the city, so that our travellers passed the gates in safety, and marched down the green marble pavement of the wide street toward the royal palace. "'At this rate we will soon have your majesty upon the throne again,' <laughs> said the tin woodman, laughing at his easy conquest of the guards. "'Thank you, friend Nick,' returned the scarecrow gratefully. Nothing can resist your kind heart and your sharp axe. As they passed through the rows of houses, they saw, through the open doors, that men were sweeping and dusting and washing dishes, while the women sat around in groups, gossiping and laughing. What has happened? The scarecrow asked a sad-looking man with a bushy beard, who wore an apron and was wheeling a baby carriage along the sidewalk. Why, we've had a revolution, your majesty, as you ought to know very well, replied the man. And since you went away, the women have been running things to suit themselves, and I'm glad you have decided to come back and restore order, for doing housework and minding the children is, is wearing out the strength of every man in the Emerald City. Hmm, said the scarecrow thoughtfully. If it is such hard work as you say, how did the women manage it so easily? I really do not know, replied the man with a deep sigh. Oh, perhaps women are made of cast iron. No movement was made as they passed along the street to oppose their progress. Several of the women stopped their gossip long enough to cast curious looks upon our friends, but immediately they would turn away with a laugh or a sneer and resume their chatter. And when they met with several girls belonging to the army of revolt, those soldiers, instead of being alarmed or appearing surprised, merely stepped out of the way and allowed them to advance without protest. This action rendered the scarecrow uneasy. I'm afraid we're walking into a trap, said he. Nonsense, returned Nick Chopper confidently. The silly creatures are conquered already. But the scarecrow shook his head in a way that expressed doubt, and Tip said, It's too easy altogether. Look out for trouble ahead. I will, returned his majesty. Unopposed, they reached the royal palace and marched up the marble steps, which had once been thickly crusted with emeralds, but were now filled with tiny holes where the jewels had been ruthlessly torn from their settings by the army of revolt. And so far not a rebel barred their way. Through the arched hallways and into the magnificent throne room marched the tin woodman and his followers, and here, when the green silken curtains fell behind them, they saw a curious sight. Seated within the glittering throne was General Ginger, with the scarecrow's second best crown upon her head and the royal sceptre in her right hand. A box of caramels, from which she was eating, rested in her lap, and the girl seemed entirely at ease in her royal surroundings. The scarecrow stepped forward and confronted her while the tin woodman leaned upon his axe, and the others formed a half-circle back of his majesty's person. "'How dare you sit in my throne?' demanded the scarecrow, sternly eyeing the intruder. "'Don't you know you are guilty of treason, and that there is a law against treason?' 
the throne belongs to whoever is able to take it answered ginger as she slowly ate another caramel i have taken it as you see so just now i am the queen and all who oppose me are guilty of treason and must be punished by the law you have just mentioned this view of the case puzzled the scarecrow how is it friend nick he asked turning to the tin woodman why when it comes to law i have nothing to say answered that personage for laws were never meant to be understood and it is foolish to make the attempt then what shall we do asked the scarecrow in dismay why don't you marry the queen and then you can both rule suggested the wogglebug ginger glared at the insect fiercely why don't you send her back to her mother where she belongs asked jack pumpkinhead ginger frowned why don't you shut her up in the closet until she behaves herself and promises to be good inquired tip ginger's lip curled scornfully or give her a good shaking added the sawhorse no said the tin woodman we must treat the poor girl with gentleness let us give her all the jewels she can carry and send her away happy and contented at this queen ginger laughed aloud and the next minute clapped her pretty hands together thrice as if for a signal you are very absurd creatures said she but i am tired of your nonsense and have no time to bother with you longer while the monarch and his friends listened in amazement to this impudent speech a startling thing happened the tin woodman's axe was snatched from his grasp by some person behind him and he found himself disarmed and helpless at the same instant a shout of laughter rang in the ears of the devoted band and turning to see whence this came they found themselves surrounded by the armory of revolt the girls bearing in either hand their glistening knitting needles the entire throne room seemed to be filled with the rebels and the scarecrow and his comrades realized that they were prisoners you see how foolish it is to oppose a woman's wit said ginger gaily and this event only proves that i am more fit to rule the emerald city than a scarecrow i bear you no ill will i assure you but lest you should prove troublesome to me in the future i shall order you all to be destroyed that is all except the boy who belongs to old mombi and must be restored to her keeping the rest of you are not human and therefore it will not be wicked to demolish you the sawhorse and the pumpkin head's body i will have chopped up for kindling wood and the pumpkin shall be made into tarts the scarecrow will do nicely to start a bonfire and the tin man can be cut into small pieces and fed to the goats as for this immense woggle bug highly magnified if you please interrupted the insect i think i will ask the cook to make green turtle soup of you continued the queen reflectively the woggle bug shuddered or if that won't do we might use you for a hungarian goulash stewed and highly spiced she added cruelly this programme of extermination was so terrible that the prisoners looked upon one another in a panic of fear the scarecrow alone did not give way to despair he stood quietly before the queen and his brow was wrinkled in deep thought as he strove to find some means to escape while thus engaged he felt the straw within his breast move gently at once his expression changed from sadness to joy and raising his hand he quickly unbuttoned the front of his jacket this action did not pass unnoticed by the crowd of girls clustering about him but none of them suspected what he was doing until a tiny gray mouse leaped from his bosom to the floor and scampered away between the feet of the army of revolt another mouse quickly followed then another and another in rapid succession and suddenly such a scream of terror went up from the army that it might easily have filled the stoutest heart with consternation the flight that ensued turned to a stampede and the stampede to a panic 
for while the startled mice rushed wildly about the room, the scarecrow had only time to note a whirl of skirts and a twinkling of feet as the girls disappeared from the palace, pushing and crowding one another in their mad efforts to escape. The queen, at the first alarm, stood up on the cushions of the throne and began to dance frantically upon her tiptoes. Then a mouse ran up the cushions, and with a terrified leap, poor Ginger shot clear over the head of the scarecrow and escaped through an archway, never pausing in her wild career until she had reached the city gates. So, in less time than I can explain, the throne room was deserted by all, save the scarecrow and his friends, and the Wogglebug heaved a deep sigh of relief as he exclaimed, Thank goodness we are saved. For a time, yes, answered the tin woodman, but the enemy will soon return, I fear. Let us bar all the entrances to the palace, said the scarecrow. Then we shall have time to think what is best to be done. So all, except Jack Pumpkinhead, who was still tied fast to the sawhorse, ran to the various entrances of the royal palace and closed the heavy doors, bolting and locking them securely. Then, knowing that the army of revolt could not batter down the barriers in several days, the adventurers gathered once more in the throne room for a council of war. End of chapter 15